By the time he was 18 years old, Lee Wynn had already gone from undersized and overlooked to teenage phenom and top prospect. Now, he's one of the most productive American players in MLS history, which is remarkable, especially once you know how he got here. This is a story about family and heritage, about fate and decisions, and about a lifelong commitment to winning. This is Lee's story. I grew up in Vietnam. It's countryside. It's not a lot there, but we play in soccer every day. We have like 15, 20 cousins plus friends. We divide like two, three teams and play until dark. Because I was born during the war, I always feel war. It put fear into you because you don't even know what can happen to you tomorrow. You see people killing each other daily. Very fear environment for kids. At that time, I, oh, I was quit soccer. Then one day, my mom and my, and my dad come and say, okay, how, what do you think about go to America? I don't want to leave friends and family there, but it's better for us. And so I moved to America at the end of 1973. We did a lot of things as a family growing up. We used to go to like the Buddhist temple to pray and ask for good health, good fortune. Growing up, all I spoke was uh, Vietnamese with my parents and, and you know my cousins and sister. And my dad was very strict on um, you know being very you know well mannered, and we'd hate to just always do the you know sin chow and you know like chow bak. And I don't know why, but we just we hated doing it. For me, I just wanted to go out and play. At the time, you don't have money to buy toys, so the only toy I know how is buy little soccer ball, and didn't know that that soccer ball now this day make him turn out to be a so professional soccer player. I remember looking through some of the pictures back in the day of him playing soccer, and it was something that he was very into, and I think he really loved the game, and I think unfortunately he wished he could have taken it further maybe, but you know, he knew that if he couldn't do it, he uh, really wanted to put everything he got from soccer into us. I think my parents did well in trying to put us into that uh, American culture by putting us in a lot of different sports, you know, when we were young. As a big brother, he was challenging. <laughs> we are always challenging each other, always picking each other's buttons. You know, I was a menace when I was young. <laughs> trying to get into every little trouble I could, but then I'd try to get out of it. If I was told not to do something, I would definitely want to do it and try not to get caught. We were both very competitive at a young age. We used to play 1v1 in the house all the time. We used to drive my mom crazy, <laughs> especially if the ball lifted off the ground and maybe hit a china cabinet. And Marcel thinks it's funny by chasing her brother around. They work out, but they didn't know. Uh, they thought they just, you know, playing around. Once I started club soccer, my dad made sure I was out there every day, but it was, there was a purpose to it. You know, we were training with a purpose. I talked to Lee's father, and I asked him if he can join our practices, and then he brought his son. He was a very, very little, little bitty kid. And then the moment that he started moving around, very soon, that early on, I find that he's a special kid. I always try to make him believe how special he was. Because of his size, he wasn't one guy that everybody was crazy to have. I knew his future was very bright, and he has to understand what kind of a talent he has. He always tried to put me in situations to succeed. He was just as hard on, on me as my dad, and I think that's why my dad liked him. 
fam was very, very tough on Lee. Obviously very strict in regards to the way he played. He, Lee never did enough to impress fam, or at least that's what fam wanted to uh, let Lee believe, so that he always had to push to be better. It was always hard, you know, at times to, you know, to accept those, those critiques, you know, my dad and I was like, man, I just don't want to hear it right now, you know, and sometimes, you know, that would be tough, you know, and you're just like, man, like, you, you just, sometimes you don't want to go to training because you know he's going to, he's going to pick on something. Instead of patting him in the back, I did opposite. And I, I know my kid, when I do opposite, that means they got to try harder. The question if he was ever going to make it to that next level or not was my size. And uh, kids were surpassing me and physically and made it tougher for me to, you know, to be successful. But I think it was also a good thing that happened because it made you have to, to learn how to deal with it. And, you know, for me, my dad would always be like, you have to learn how to deal with this. You know, this is going to happen. You know, learn how to get by these bigger guys, faster guys. I let Lee to fight it out. I don't want him to step in too early. And I don't want to give Lee a false sense that hey, my dad always there all the time. You know, I was glad he pushed me that hard when I was young because no one else would have. And so, you know, and it made me into a player I am today because now it's, if your touch is bad, you know, in training, that's, you know, like I, I try not to have a bad touch in training because, you know, if, if you're that meticulous in training, it's just gonna come second nature in the game. He focused so much on the game and on his grades. If he got a B, he was disappointed. I think a lot of that came from his family. They expected a lot, and I think that's just the family makeup. Coming from an Asian background, Asian culture, school always came first in the house. It was, doesn't matter what we had to do, you need, you need to finish your homework, and we needed to make top marks. Growing up, I, couldn't make any B's. You know, I had, to, I had to be an A. A B, B would not be good enough. So he instilled that in us uh, very young. It took me the whole turn over 10 years to finish a bachelor degree. And for that reason, I determined my kid to focus in school and finish college. It pushed me, and I think it pushed her. For us, it was, you know, Hey, we don't have money to send you to college, so I need both of you guys to get a full scholarship. That was his goal for us, and, you know, ended up paying off. When Indiana finally came in and they said, okay, you know, we want you, we want you here now, and he agreed, it was a great fit. When that time was coming, it was a relief that I accomplished my goal. When he went to Indiana, his coach, Mike Freitag, called me and he said, well, I think Lee is going to Europe. Lee said, that a lot of scouts say, I need to go pro now. And those people say, yes, we value Lee and he has a great potential to be a pro. My agent came to me and said, listen, PSV, they've been following you, and they're really interested. I wanted to be one of the few Americans that could go to Europe and play. Three days into training, and they're like, we want to offer you a contract. That was probably one of the happiest moments of my life. He wasn't just playing for any team. He was playing for PSV Eindhoven, and he was playing for the legend of the game, Gus Heavy. It was a risk, but I was young, I was up for it. What better way to start off your career than to play for one of the top clubs in Holland. That was the best place I could have gone to, to start my career because they develop young players very well. And I'd learned a lot playing with the likes of Koku, Farfan, Afalai. So, you know, training with these guys every day, you see, you know, the ins and outs of, you know, what it takes to, to play at that level. And, you know, I, I wouldn't take that back for anything. The major minutes was going to come next year and that's when he signed with the Russian national team. The unfortunate situation for, for Lee 
it was that the coaching change happened at PSV Eindhoven. So his chance with PSV is not going to be that great. My dad was approached by one of the Vietnamese clubs, Huan An July. The owner of Huan An July basically told me, you know, we want you to be the center of this whole thing. We want to build a team around you, and you know, I think every player wants to be in that situation. You know, it was a tough contract to, to walk away from, you know, because you never knew it was going to come back. So I decided with my, my dad and my agent, we were like, you know, let's do it. I never really understood how big it was, you know, until I got there and realized that the whole country knows who you are. And, you know, they've been following my career since I was 18. And that was probably the biggest, most humbling moment, you know, ever. And at first it felt foreign, but, you know, it, it didn't take long to make it feel like it was a homecoming. I learned to embrace all that love and affection, I guess, when I was over there, because they're very prideful. You know, and you know, they were, you know, had a lot of joy to see that there was another of their kind to be successful and be able to play at that level. And they just all wanted to be experiencing the moment with you. Those were great moments, you know, in my career. Good league for me. It was good living, and my agent wanted me to stay. He was like, you're going to be set for life after you play your career here but I knew that there was another level that I could reach. And I was just like, all right, is, is this, is this going to be my career? Or, or do you think you still have more left than you? I remember the day, actually, he told me he wanted to go back to show what he could do and go to MLS and have no regrets uh, when, when his career is finished. I want to go to the States and play to try to get back on the national team. He wanted to give people hope who feel that they've been written off or, or feel like, you know, people have forgotten about them. With Lee coming back over to MLS, I certainly think there was an element of homesickness that was involved in that. Um, and I just think he wanted to get back and, and try to get back on everyone's radar. And he goes through some sort of allocation process, I believe, and he ends up in Vancouver. He was on, like, minimum contract, and he had to just basically prove himself all over again. And that's not easy to do. Uh, where would you see your role in the team if you get the opportunities? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I can play, you know, either outside on the wings or I can play, you know, underneath the strikers. And then, on top of that, to find out that he got released, I mean, I was shocked. I think it's going to be great, so. That time I was obviously a little, little angry because I never really had an opportunity to show myself. Um, He's certainly one that uh, is going to excite this uh, Vancouver Whitecap crowd. Thank you, Lou. Oh, thank you. And I didn't know until I landed, but while I was midair, New England had picked me off waivers. And, and I get all these text messages from call me, call me when you land. So I called them and says, hey, pack your bags because you're going to have to fly to New England tonight. You know, for me, I was just happy that, you know, somebody picked me up from waivers and I have another chance to, to try and show myself. Lee Wynn was picked up off waivers from the Vancouver Whitecaps late last week. I said, Lee, what you need to start doing is build roots within a club. Once you get here, we want to keep you here. And then from that point on, after that first year, I realized how good he could be. And we changed our formation to get Lee into a position where I thought his strengths would help us. We're set for the only regular season meeting of the year between the England Revolution and Vancouver Whitecaps. No foul there as Brett Schneider went down. Bailhaber centers a bid to equalize here. Win does just that. 1 1. Lee Win has his first goal in a Revolution jersey. Lee just capitalizes and hammers it home. Just a great finish by Lee, and that's going to spark that boy's confidence. Win lets it drop, takes a shot. Oh! That is gold in stuff! Have that Vancouver! an emphatic statement to the team that cut him, and you're not going to see a better goal than that. Every player in that situation dreams of putting it on the team to let him go. 
Uh, I wouldn't say revenge, but I mean, you know, just relieved. So I mean, I'm just, I'm just happy we got the win, and you know, the, the way it ended up, you know, I couldn't have dreamt it any better. Once you step out those doors, you, the heat kind of hits you, and uh, you know that's when you know you're back in Vietnam. I miss every time flying back there. It's a part of me, you know. It's, it's in my blood. It's a strong bond, and it's where part of my roots are from. I have a deep connection with it, and not only that, I've also played there. The city's grown and quite a bit, you know, and but everything that I remembered and missed was still there. Yeah, I didn't expect this much of a, you know, a welcome back party, but uh, everyone's been very, very nice and welcoming since I've been here, so I'm, I'm excited to be back. I had the opportunity to stay in Vietnam. Could have easily lived a happy life, but I didn't want to end my career with what ifs. I felt like I had a lot left in the tank and I, and I wanted to, to prove people that I can, I can still play. I'm putting all my eggs into this basket now. and we'll never forget is the season where he was fighting to be the MVP of the MLS and they were chanting MV Lee and you could really tell he was he was enjoying himself. I think we had the team, the squad to, to get all to go all the way. Now win, still going, scores! Win, tries to shift the keeper. Oh my word! Lee win! We'll make highlight reels. Lee win! Oh, it's a beauty! For a midfielder to score like 18 or 19 goals, it was absurd. Davies win! Yeah! He was enjoying the game, and that's very important. When you enjoy, you play with freedom. Lee Wynn in a pocket of space, charging forward for New England. Bullets opening up wide to the left. Wynn's looking back to the right, and it's going to find Tia Murray, who squares it for Jones, and New England walk into Red Bull Arena, win in this building for the first time, and take the advantage back home with them. 35, 37,000 people at our, at our game. What an atmosphere that was for an Eastern Conference Finals. Might be the start of something big for a bright young team. Way dropping it in for Tim Cahill, the box, just like a solid. Can't do it up. Cahill pokes it in. Terry's ball and Roma stays at home. It's knocked down, but it was up and dead. The Revolution have their goal. Charlie Davies. In the air, Sam trying to return for Cahill. Can't quite get to it. It's knocked down the box. Lee do a lot and scored. Wide again for Tierney. Tierney's cross, and a goal! Charlie Davies! Revolution back in front! That's it, full time! The New England Revolution have won the Eastern Conference Championship! And for the first time since 2007, are going back to MLS Cup! Best feeling ever. Oh my gosh, one more to go. One more to go. Winning the Eastern Conference Championship and uh, being able to go to the finals, uh, that's something that's so hard to do in sports. But getting that close to, to winning a championship it was one of my bittersweet moments in soccer. So. The last few years, he matured and think like an adult. And that's how his game improved. Inside of me, I'm very proud of, you know, of what he did. Late April, we've been first place 10. You know, sometimes uh, it doesn't work with one team, but it, you know, it works out with another. The Vancouver Whitecaps, they didn't believe in me, they cut me, and so I wanted to prove myself that I do deserve to be in this league. I do deserve to, to be playing. 
luckily, I got my chance in New England. This is such a great group of supporters here in New England, and it makes you want to, to do better, be better, to try to get back to the winning ways of New England and having a chance to win the MLS Cup for them. Vietnam will always be there for me. They're always asking me to come back and play in the V-League right now. I feel like that's such a great pride to have that. I'm not only playing for myself, but I'm playing for Vietnamese Americans, for Asian Americans. But I still feel like there's this road that I haven't quite got to the end of here yet. This season, you know, we just haven't been able to put all the pieces together. But for any Revs fans, anybody following us knows that we can string together a couple wins. You jump really quick in the tables. So we're a team who can put multiple wins together and take us to where we want to be. I can tell that he is always trying to improve himself. It's something that he's passionate about and he loves the game. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I just think it's such a beautiful game. For me, it's, it's, it's a great feeling. That's why I love going to work every day. Whether I'm having stress or problems outside of soccer, when I'm out on the field, all that goes away. That's his first goal in a Revolution jersey. To the near post, Gleason can't get there, and it's Lee Wynn for the Revolution who's done it. From Wynn, oh, that's cheeky. He's back on the U.S. national team radar for the first time in seven years. Sometimes the way we imagine our story is completely different from the way it plays out. But that's not to say that it can't turn out even better than what we could have ever imagined.